worshiping with us today at the Fondren SDA Church on this first Sabbath of 2023. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And we at Fondren are here in this new year to make a godly impact in 2023. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal through us. We remind one another in our service of worship that he alone is worthy to be praised. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O oh Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O oh Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O oh Lord, remind us that you lead and love us. Lord, bring us to restoration and renewal of life. Come to Jesus this day, and he will make something beautiful happen in your life. Let us feel the wonder and power of God's creative energy. Let us feel the awe and joy of God's love for us. We come to worship God with a full sense of joy and expectation. Break open our hearts this morning to hear your word, O oh God. Let our fears be vanquished, our spirits restored. Let us open our hearts, our spirits, our souls to God's lavish love. O oh Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. 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 Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Anybody glad to be in the house of God in 2023? Amen. amen, amen. If you wouldn't mind standing with us, stand to your feet as we sing our opening song, Come Before His Presence with Thanksgiving. Come on, and we're singing. Come before for his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts. Enter into his courts with
for that we rejoice we give him praise remain standing with us our opening hymn is number 27 rejoice ye pure in heart church to be in on this first Sabbath of the new year. You made it. 2023 and we made it. Give yourself a hand. Now while we're all going through some things, we, yes, we acknowledge that, but you made it and you're here and you're smiling. Thank God for that. If you're visiting with us here at 7950 West Fuquay for the first time, please stand. It's very important. Thank you. It's very important because I have Amen. something really well for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. There are folk coming by right now to get a card, to give a card to you, and we'd like to have your information. We'd like to know that you were here with us on this day, the first Sabbath of the new year. Once you completed this card after service, please come out through the main doors to the right to the Welcome Center, and we will be there to greet you with a very special gift that's prepared for you. Don't forget that. We have this very special gift just for you. You may be seated. Thank you so much for coming. She's right, right there, here. Yeah, very good. Thank you again for coming to Fondren, where the sun always shines. And at this time, for this first Sabbath of the new year, we need you all to greet each other in that very special Fondren way. God bless you and happy Sabbath. Come on, why y'all greeting us? We have a new song we're going to teach you. So while you're greeting each other, we're going to praise the Lord. Is that all right? Come let us. Let us worship. Let us sing. Hallelujah to the King. Let us raise our voices high. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Let us. 
hour of prayer, when our hearts lowly bend, and we gather to Jesus, our Savior, and our friend. If we come to him in faith, his protection to share, what a balm for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Our kind, loving, heavenly Father, before your throne, your children bow. We want to give thanks. We want to give praise to your most holy name. We don't take your blessing or your love for granted. We recognize that when we come to thee and open our mouths, crying loud, asking for thy divine forgiveness. You are faithful and just, and you will forgive us, not only forgive us, but you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So today as your children come, I pray a special blessing, not only for the members who are present today, but I pray for each visitor, because Father, this is the first Sabbath in the year and to some of us, it may be our last. But while we are in your presence, we are giving praise and thanksgiving to you for what you have done in our lives. And we recognize that if we confess our sins, you have promised to forgive and to save. And Lord, I pray not only for the members of present, but they are new babes who are going to be baptized into the house of faith. So I pray that you would be with them. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. Help us not to think that they are going to be old Christians after day one or two. Let us show compassion and love to your new children as you have shown compassion and love to us. And then, Father, as we are excited and happy for these new believers, our hearts are also sad for the Rodriguez and Gray family. But precious in your sight are your children who sleep in Christ. That blessed hope we have that we will see them again if we are faithful. Oh, Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to have you in our lives. And I pray for our visitors. I pray it's not by chance they came to worship here today. They came to hear a word from you. And I pray for the preacher. I pray that as he opened his mouth wide, that you will fill it as you have promised in your word. I pray that the words that fall from his lips of clay may strengthen and encourage each one of us. Oh, bless us, Father. We thank you so much for what you have done. And I pray not only for the audience here, but we have our own line audience. And who knows what they're going through at this time. But because your word is sure, you said, ask and we shall receive. We must believe your promise. So thank you so much. And I pray for the leader of this flock. Give him wisdom. Give him patience. Give him understanding. And I pray not only him for him, but I pray for his family. Bless your people as we work together today. Bless your people as we fellowship and worship is my prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's children stand together, amen and amen. Because we ask. Because we
is a book in the Bible called Ephesians, and it goes like this. The Bible is made up of all kinds of stories, poems, and letters, and it's all about God. The Bible has two parts, the Old Testament and New Testament. Ephesians is in the New Testament, right after Galatians, but before Philippians. We call it a book, but it's really a letter, written by a man named Paul to a church, or a group of people who follow Jesus, in a city called Ephesus. Even though it was written to the Ephesians a long time ago, Paul's letter can still help us today. The church in Ephesus had two kinds of people, Jewish people and Gentile people. Jewish people had been born into God's special family, the same family God had rescued out of slavery in Egypt, and the same family Jesus was born into. Gentile people were everyone else. And Gentile and Jewish people didn't always agree on how to follow Jesus because they were different. So this is what Paul told them. A person's faith in Jesus is the most important thing about them, more important than their hair color or where they were born or what language they speak. Paul said no matter how different people are, through Jesus, they can have unity. Unity just means staying together with other people because you have something in common. Paul tried to remind them that Everyone who has faith in Jesus has one amazing thing in common. Jesus rescued all of them. Paul said the church was like a building made of stones, and Jesus was the cornerstone, holding the whole building together. So we can be glad the church is full of so many different kinds of people. Our differences can even be a gift from God, because our differences can make us a better team. We can thank God for one another, and pray for each other, and serve one another, with the same kind of love Jesus has. Paul said when that happens, we can know how wide and long and high and deep God's love is. And we can trust in God's power. God's power helps us to live our lives in a new way. God helps us tell the truth and follow Jesus' example. God can also help us love the people we care about, our families, neighbors, and friends. Paul said following Jesus was like choosing to walk in the light instead of in the dark. Paul said it was also like being a soldier in God's army. But we should always remember we're not fighting against other people, whoever they are, because Jesus wants unity for everyone. Our fight is not against human beings, Paul said. It's against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. So put on all of God's armor. God's armor is different from the armor most soldiers wear. A person wearing this armor is the best, strongest soldier there is because nothing can shake their faith or stop them from following Jesus. Whether Paul was talking about families, stone buildings, or putting on God's armor, Paul wanted one thing, for everyone who follows Jesus to know that faith in Jesus is more powerful than anything that tries to divide us. And that's a little about the book of the Bible called Ephesians. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Paul wrote Ephesians. It's in the New Testament. People are different. Faith in Jesus brings people together. God gives us love and power. We can put on the armor of God. We can have unity. And that's a part of God's story. We'd like to highlight some of the events happening here and around Fondren for 2023. 10 days of prayer and fasting here at Fondren. It's going to be from January 11th through the 21st. We invite you to join us for our first ministry event for this year, Adrian. All right, all right. We're going to prepare to have a godly impact in 2023. Amen. Amen. Look for more information on that. But the thing that you don't have to wait for information on is our Tuesday night recharge service. We had our first service on Tuesday, Janice. I was so blessed. I definitely needed that this past week. Yes. So you need to come out on Tuesday night for our teaching series for the month of January is Necessary Losses for Impact. 
don't miss out. Pastor Cambizi is teaching and preaching yes. at the same time. At the same time. So join us here at 7 o'clock. So you know our theme is impact yes. for the year. Yes, it is. So we're going to have an impact 15. Okay. All right. Do you think you know what that is about? I don't know. Why don't you help me out? So we want you guys to join us here in the sanctuary. Okay. On every Sabbath from 11 to 11 15, and okay. we are going to be singing hymns wow. as a congregation. Okay, We're only gonna experience it if you're here in the building, so we want to include you and make sure you guys come to the building from 11 to 11 15. Okay, for our hymn singing in that morning. Stay tuned after the singing for our 11 15 service for our worship service. All right, all right, we'll see how that works out. Yes. That's kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, we are ready for you to pull out those phones and do what? Like, share, and subscribe. That's right, on all of our platforms, Uh YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We want to thank those people that have been sharing because we can see your shares. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So keep that up. But in the meantime, be blessed. Have a blessed week. We want to see you on Tuesday night. And join us here next Sabbath at Farmdown, where the sun, S-O-N, always shines. Every Sabbath, everybody. Every Sabbath, everyone. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We're so grateful for that. We thank God for I think you're all wondering what it is. We, we, that's Haiti. They had their Independence Day on January the 1st. And uh, we are grateful for our Haitian uh, community and family. We are going to be celebrating all the Independence Days of our church members. Can I get an amen? Amen. Wherever you were born, wherever you came from, we thank God for it shaped you to be who you are. And we thank God for that. Happy New Year again. Can I say that? Happy New Year. This is our first Sabbath together. First Sabbath, many, many wanted to be here, but they are not here. Uh, Tomorrow we'll be having a funeral because somebody didn't make it in 2023. Uh, on first at 1 a.m., I got a call that one of my mothers in Dayton, Ohio, passed away. So there are many people who wanted to be where you are. And by, by the grace of God, he has made it possible for you and I to be in the house of God. And for that, we are grateful and we thank him for that. We do have some highlights for you that we want to share with you on this very first Sabbath of the year. Uh, Sabbath school. Anybody glad about Sabbath school? All right, I do have my two friends supposed to be running and coming as they come and talk to you about this wonderful, wonderful, listen, we as Seventh-day Adventists believe in education. Can I get an amen? We believe in what, everybody? Aha, uh-huh. we even have a school and it's called Sabbath school. So we wanna know how do you enroll into the class, into the school, and which classes can you take? And who is welcome into this school? Amen. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm so glad to see you all here on the first Sabbath of the year. And we wanted to start this Sabbath off right by taking this time to invite each and every one of you personally to come and join us for Sabbath school. We have Sabbath school here every Sabbath. Do you all know that? We have Sabbath school for adults. We have Sabbath school for new believers. And we even have Sabbath school for children. Amen. We have so many dedicated teachers that come out here every Sabbath morning with gifts and ideas and fun and learning and spiritual development for your children. And so I just want you to understand the importance. As parents, you are given this beautiful opportunity to train up your child in the way they should go. And oftentimes we think about that as 
If I do this, then that will happen. But guess what? If you don't do it, something else will happen too. Wow. So it's not just about doing this. A lack of that provides an opportunity for something else that you may not want. So I really encourage you to bring your children. They have so much fun. Their teachers are so excited to see them and their classmates are excited to see them as well. So please bring your chil children. Look, children, you see me? Tell your parents to bring you to Sabbath school. Nag them. Say, I want to go. I want to go. They're going to get annoyed and they're going to be like, fine, let's go. And then they're going to have an awesome time in their class and you'll have an awesome time in your class as well. Amen. Amen. Some of you might be saying, why? Why come to Sabbath school? Three reasons. I got three reasons for you, so make sure you count this. Number one, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show your thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, 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 yeah, rightly dividing the word of truth. Number two, Hebrews 10.25, and let us not elect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. Why? Especially now, the day of his return is drawing nigh. And third, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpeneth iron. Let's have some iron sharpening here. Come to Sabbath school. We are family here at Fondren. Have y'all figured that out yet? We are family. Now, we're going to talk about the month of uh, December. Uh, we got birthdays. Where's my sister? On birth if, you, if you had a birthday in December, did you get jib with gifts? I'm just asking. Okay, anyway. Uh, what, what are we doing for folks? If you had a birthday in December, first thing, I need you to stand up on your feet so that we can see you. Stand on your feet. If you had a birthday in September, I mean, uh, December. Remain standing, remain standing because the ushers have a small token of appreciation and a gift and love from the social committee. So just remain standing and whenever I do these, it always has to do with eating because I like food, so you're going to be eating something. Now, those that are standing with the birthdays, is there anyone that is over 70? Anyone over 70? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. All right, we've got one, two, okay. We've got an extra gift for those over 70. It's a nice wine bottle, but not real wine. The good wine. It's in the white bag. We've got Brother Carrington and Brother Runnels. That's for the anniversaries. We have another one? We have another one? Where? Jan is not 70. But you didn't get your gift here. Here you go, my dear. Huh? Yeah, you're not. She, she made it clear I am not over 70. So we have Brother Carrington and Brother Runnels. And another 70? No, that's his birthday. He's not. Right here, 70 in December? Wonderful. Okay, I've got you. Lori's coming. Lori's coming with them. Yeah. We're not going to forget Van. I'm now going to hand it back over to Eric Kelly to take care of the next gift item that we have. Some of y'all look good for 70. Jesus be helping people out, don't he? Oh, man, a life in Christ, it does make you look younger. It makes you feel good to do that. We want to acknowledge uh, people whose anniversary were, uh, was in December. Did I get it right? All right, she said I got it right. Anniversaries in December. Uh, now, that's what I'm talking about, in December. Hey, all righty, all righty. Um, uh, 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 keep standing, anniversaries, wedding anniversaries. Uh, we see some 
We see some pastor. We're going to wear you out in a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, the white bags, anniversaries. Praise God. Praise God. Anniversaries. One right there. Praise God. Any more anniversaries? Right there. There we go. Anniversaries. Should, should, should we make him come? Let's go stand with him, sis. Go stand. Yeah. Yeah. We got one big one. Pastor Kim Beasy and Sister Kim Beasy. Anniversary in December. Let's give them a hand also. Okay. We family. We just celebrate being together, loving on each other. So any birthdays we missed or anniversaries? Anybody out there? I see one. Do I see one in the back? Okay. I think we're good. Did we get everybody? God bless you until this time next month. Happy New Year. Happy Sabbath. Oh, man. Well, oh, I don't even know where to start, but I guess I'll start here. The month of February. Who knows what the month of February is all about? Black history. Black history. We, this year, will be celebrating black history a little bit differently. Come on now. Can I get an amen with that? Yeah, we, we have people from different countries, nationalities in this congregation, and we want to recognize all of you. So we're going to have International Day. How many of you guys familiar with International Day? International Day every Sabbath in the month of February. Every Sabbath. So for the first Sabbath in February, that's February the 4th, we are going to be celebrating the Black American experience yeah yeah black american experience for the second sabbath the second sabbath which is the 11th we're going to celebrate the black caribbean experience yeah 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 i thought i would get a little more more uh activity with that one and then the third sabbath which is the 18th we're going to be celebrating the inter the continental africa experience and then this last sabbath we're all going to get together and worship god together so 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 here's the request from us we have three people that's going to be in charge of the three different days i'm going to be responsible for the black experience day elder harris please stand she is going to be responsible for the Black Caribbean Experience Day. And then the third person, Elder Enoch Akama, he's going to be responsible for planning the Continental African Day. So at the end of church, we want to meet with those of you who want to participate in the planning process. So the Black Experience is going to meet on my left, you're right, at the end of service. The uh, Caribbeans are going to meet probably in this section and this section since there are so many of you guys. And then the continental Africa will meet on this section, my right, your left. Are you guys excited? Oh yes, I'm excited. I'm excited about the whole month of February. We're gonna have some good food, good preaching, and some good fellowship. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that day. Thank you. Thank you so much. These are things that are coming your way. Uh, Elder Gibson kept on saying the black experience. And I was wondering, why are you calling yourself like that? Black American. Is that what you meant? <laughs> That's my guy. All right. So, so here's what's going to happen. This is, this is your church. Um, as we announce things, participate. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Don't just sit there and complain. We participate. All right, we, we know it's going to be the best in the next uh, month of February is the continental African. They know, they know, no. Uh, there's no, there's no doubt about that. 
All right. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, please. I'm joking. But, but we really want to experience it. We notice we're a multi-cultural uh, church. All right? If we don't tell our stories, we will let projections kill us. All right? Some of you have got projections on Africans. All right? You're afraid. You've watched too many of coming, coming to America. All right? And you forget that's a, com that's a comedy by comedians. Uh, some of you actually believe that. All right? We don't have women who just bark like dogs and all that kind of stuff. But some of you believe that. I, I, I've been in this country for so long. I've pastored so many churches. And you'll be shocked that people would literally believe that. All right? Because I'm a tall African. Big voice. You're just commanding us around. Because you watch the movie. So what we're doing next month is for us to fix that. All right? Because we cannot be one with projections. Some of you have got projections on African Americans. All right, I know you, you immigrants, when you gather around your tables and say a lot of negative stuff. Now, let me say this. This is deep right here. You can never love someone publicly whom you disrespect privately. That's deep. That's as deep. I know it is. So what we say about each other at home impacts how we feel about each other in public. All right, so February is going to be exciting. We're looking forward to it from Sabbath school all the way to AY. All right, it's, it's yours. So come and support the leadership. Bring your ideas. Teach us your food. Come on, talk to me, somebody. All right, you know, you know godly food. Okay, just bring it up. All right, some people don't know that Africa is a continent. So when people say Africans, that is a huge statement. Because there are some Africans who have never been to any other African country but the country they were born in. As much as when you say a black American, you know, some people have never been to New York, never been to Alaska, never been to... You feel what I'm saying? The Southern is different from the Middle America and the Northern. So we want to have fun. All right? As we correct stuff and help each other out. And the Caribbean. Anybody from Cari the Caribbean? Oh, yeah. All right. We are so excited about you. We also have got projections on you. All right. So don't come on over here and feed the projections, but help us. Help us. Can I get an amen? amen? One of my prayers is that whilst we're here is for us to visit some of these countries. Amen. All right. If, there's, uh, if I'm invited to speak in any country, we're going to open it up for some members who wants to go there. Because it, it makes sense when we know each other. Does that make sense? All right. So we thank God for that. Thank you, elders, for leading out. Uh, they will need your support. Uh, they, you are choosing your own speaker. Come on, talk to me. And you are paying for your speaker. It's fair. All right. Amen. And I have an amount that you are going to raise as a committee for this because I don't want to look bad. If a preacher comes and preaches and you give them $75 and say, we pray for you. No, no, no. They pray for themselves. All right. So everyone is needed in the committee to plan it together, make it work, make it run. All right. And if you are asked to put on anything, just participate. And if you know anyone from that culture, invite them, even if they're not members of our, is that fair to say? All right, so that would be one. So don't look at the five of you and say we are only five. No, there are many, many. Uh, Houston has four million people. For what, everybody? Four million. All right, so let's have fun. Elder Gibson, if it fails, it's on you. Um, we know that God never fails. We know God never fails, dog. We know. God, I, 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 I like this brother. I didn't know I had a, a brother in, in, in the black American. I was always suspicious that there was somebody. There was my brother somewhere, and I thank God for Elder Gibson. Uh, at this moment, we're going to have our vows uh, that we do have for baptism. I'm going to ask the three candidates to please come as we go through these vows together.
I'm going to ask you to come stand right here and face the church. Put the baby in the middle. Normally, Pastor Lee is the one who does the vows. Uh, but today, I simply say it is the first Sabbath of the year. Let me do some. All right. Amen. Anybody glad for the leaves? All right. We thank God. We thank God for the leaves. We are grateful. I was telling him yesterday that I do have a co-pastor for free. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Co-pastor, not associate. I don't believe in associates. I believe in co-pastoring. So whenever God blesses us with one, whenever that will be, there will not be an associate. There will be a co-pastor. Can I get an amen? What you call people matter. At this moment, my elders, please come as we surround these three as they take the vows. They need the support of the elders. We're grateful. Let's put our hands together for our elders. Um, you can move in a little bit so that the elders will come behind you. Very good. All right. So excited with these men and women. We're excited. We were here yet last night just planning 2023, talking about our dreams together for two and a half hours from 7 to 9.30 last night as elders are just having a conversation. Lord, how can we minister to your people? Because it's a team effort. It's a what, everybody? It's a team effort. Uh, and we believe we're all equal. As each one of us gets in to do what God has called us to do, we really we are all here for you. Is that fair to say, elders? Amen. That's what we talked about yesterday. We're here for you, and we really want uh, to do the best we can, especially in this year. So we do have three. We do have Brenda Mitchell. Wave your hand. Some people don't know these twins. All right. Then we do have uh, Shana Mitchell. All right. And we do have the baby in the middle. That's Evnik here. All right. After church last Sabbath, Evnik came running. As I was shaking people's hands, she said, Pastor, I'm ready for baptism. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So she's excited about it. All right. So we do have these vows. Uh, to those who are new with us as Seventh-day Adventists, we, we, we do believe that they are some commitments we must have so that we're held accountable. Can I get an amen? amen? Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, show me in the Bible where the vows are. I said, well, there are no vows in the Bible. But as a church, we do believe in order for you to grow in a systematic way, you got to have expectations that are on you and commitments that you make. So this is, this is something that we do so that we can measure that. All right. So we do have these vows. Number one, it goes this way. Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Yes, very good. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins? And do you believe that God, that by God's grace through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? All right, you can say it with a smile, okay? All right, amen. Do you, accept, do you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins, given you a new heart, and do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word? The only rule of faith practiced for the Christian. And do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Yes. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as the transcript of the character of God and the revelation of his will? Yes. Oh yes, you got to go that way. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? So here's what it is. As, I, as they're saying yes, we're also reminding you what you said yes to. So it's a double-aged uh, reminder. All right, where are we at now? Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the spirit of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? That means after baptism, God is going to give you a spiritual gift. Is that all right? 
All right, everybody gets one. All right, good. And more than one sometimes. All right, do you believe uh, in church organization? You believe in coming to church? Yes. All right, that's very good. Let me read that one again. <laughs> Is it, uh, you know, do you believe in church organization? Say yes. Is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithe and offering and by your personal effort and influence? You have already said yes. So if you believe in church organization, you ready? When you don't return tithe, it means you don't believe in church organization. Your behavior is the one that validates what you believe. Does that make sense? All right. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Number what now? Ten. Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in any of its forms for human consumption, and from the misuse or uh, trafficking of narcotics or other drugs? Very good. Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? All right, they say yes. Uh, you don't have to memorize all of them, but they are saying yes into learning what they don't know yet. Is that all right? Amen. Um, do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And is it your desire to be baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Then the last one, okay. Do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, language are invited, accepted into this fellowship? And do you desire to be a member of this local Foundry Seventh Day Adventist Church um, upon baptism? All right, all 13 of the vows, they've said yes. Anyone to make a motion that after baptism we accept them into the membership of this church? Moved. Any second? All in favor say aye. Aye. aye it is carried. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together as we encourage them uh, to get ready. You can just. You can sit right there, okay? Be seated right there. All right. At this moment, we're going to do something very special today, elders. Let's 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 do our thing. Uh, we are going to do something very special today. It's the beginning of um, the year, and we do believe we came in last night, prayed over this, and discussed this. There may be somebody here today who wants to say, "Listen, I need to start my year with dedicating my life to God." I want to be anointed before the year goes too far. I just want to set myself aside for God. Is anybody? Anybody want to, before you get sick, before the money gets funny, you just want to say, listen, I just want to be set aside, be anointed for the things of God, and that's what I want to do. So our elders are all standing in, and they're going to come in and anoint. You come to the front, and they will anoint and pray with you. Whatever it is, some of you need to stand over your family. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And you are saying in 2023, this is it. Godly impact. God, I need you in my family. God, I need you in my career. God, I need wisdom when it comes to my decisions. God, I need your presence. I cannot go without you leading me. I need you in my going out. I need you in my coming in. If that is your desire, I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask you as music is playing and being sung, what a friend we have in Jesus, we're going to pray that you come and get anointed with these elders. Each one of them is ready. So you just come in and get anointed for the year. It may be for someone who is not here, but you are believing God for their breakthrough in 2023. Let's pray first before you start coming up and our praise team gets on stage. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this moment. Grateful that, Lord, you've brought us this far for such a time as this. Now, Master, we're doing that which you have commanded us to do. That, Lord, if your people, be they sick or in need, 
let them call upon the elders of the church and they will anoint them in the name of Jesus Christ. If they are sick, they'll get better. If they are confused, you bring clarity. So we pray that, Lord, as your people get and come, we pray that you stand by your promise and turn things around for us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your time. I'm going to ask you if you want to come and have yourself anointed, your family, please come. The elders are many. We do have a lot of them and everyone is able to do it. Let's move as fast as we can. The music, let it start happening as we enter into this worshipful environment of anointing. Thank uh you. -huh. 
a privilege. What a privilege to join in the singing. Let's, let's sing together. Let's sing together. Let's sing together, everything. everybody. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do. singing let's keep singing don't give up don't give up that's it don't give up let's keep singing that song please everybody have we trials and temptations have we trials and temptations they're going to be coming in 2023 trials is and temptations starting and selling it with prayer this morning. So if there's someone who was wondering what we're doing here, we're simply can saying, we listen, before it comes, God, can you sell us? God, can you keep us? God, whatever happens in 2023, it's in your hands. And that's what this anointing is simply saying. God, we give it to you. God, we bring it to you. And whilst the singing is going on, I'm going to anoint the elders. After the elders are all anointed, I'm going to ask Elder Lee to come and anoint me for this year. We are believing God for godly impact. Anybody believes that this year? And we're going to do some things if some things are going to happen. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So at this moment, I'm going to be anointing all the elders. And then after that, Elder Lee will anoint me.
thing I've discovered with the things of God they look simple and yet hidden in the simple things of God is the power of God and so we're believing as a church that God is going to do something that is never done before you have heard me say it for the past six months I didn't come here for the ordinary I didn't come here to do what has been done here I believe if all that God has done is all that God wanted to be done here that we will not be here I believe there's still more to be done. And so we need more praying as a church. Starting this coming Wednesday, we are going to be on Zoom every night, 6 to 7. That information is going to be put in your emails. If you're not on our one email list, please let me see your hands because you've got to be on there. We're going to communicate a lot of good stuff. All right. So at the end, I think we're going to find a way of you getting your email. We're going to send this Zoom every night starting on the 11th to the 21st from 6 to 7 and you can go home and download 10 days of prayer.com that's what it is so 25 million seventh day adventists across the world we're all going to be joining each other in prayer for 10 days of power can i get an amen, amen. and we want to be part of that movement of god so every night, 6 to 7, we want all of us to be there. We want 200 people on there, if not more, as we pray together. Is that all right? We believe in God. We're going to do the ridiculous, simple things of God, expecting the amazing move of God. And it starts with us praying together as a team. Let's put our hands together as we thank God in advance for what he's going to do. Elders, thank you so much for your coming. And we are grateful for you. Um, and I'm going to call upon our church clock to come quickly and she is going to uh, give the certificates to those we baptized last year uh, and then uh, we are done with 2022 then we look into 2023 uh, we do have people who were baptized at our last evangelistic series and we want to say to them listen we are grateful we are working out some of their package Everyone who is going to be baptized is going to receive a Bible with their name on it, a nicely engraved on it. Uh, we, we are not, we're not buying a $15 Bible either. We are buying a real Bible that you keep for your spiritual legacy. It matters. It's nice to buy new Bibles, but find one that when you die, your grand-grand-grandchild, when they want to know what kind of a person you were spiritually, they are just given a Bible and they'll discover you used to read and think some things. Can I get an amen? But today we're going to give them certificates and um, after that we're going to have uh, our program, Sean will go as scheduled while we get ready for our baptism. It's in your hands. Okay, it's our privilege and our joy to give these certificates out. The first one is Danae Gibson. Yes. <laughs> Don't, don't get tired yet. It's the first Sabbath of the year. All right. So grateful. So grateful. So grateful for you, Mama. Appreciate it. 
Janice Thibodeau. Thibodeau, is she here? Janice? All right. Jenny? It looked like the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Nisha, Gail, Denise, Kingston, Elms. Alexis Barth and Charles. <laughs> Anne Rubach. Anne Rubach, are you here, Anne? I know we spoke yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Arthur Monroe. Arthur, are you here today? Taryn McPhee, Taryn. Uh, yes, Teddy Toussaint Jr. Amen. He's a deacon already, he's a deacon already. Put your hands together right there. That's why they'll make you stay and they keep going. Anthony Ford. Anthony, are you here today? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, And last but not least, Mayolo Ali. Mayolo Ali, are you here today? God bless. prepare for our offering before she comes and let me ask you a question how many of you have got a who brought in an intentional offering today it's the first Sabbath of the year now come on all right nothing changes if nothing changes uh, so as we think about it you just gotta have that kind of thing don't be extental about him be intentional about him this year can I get an amen, amen. all right our treasure is gonna lead us through our Offering time. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. Happy Sabbath. Aren't you all happy? You made it through the old year. Now it's a new year. You're back in church. Some people didn't make it. Some people uh, did not make it. So we made it. We need to be happy. And then we need to be thankful. And remember, we still have our project going on. We have a lot of things to do in this church. And we're asking you, Pastor, anoint everybody. I pray that you're, you're anointed and that God will bless you so you can bless this church. When he bless you, don't forget to bless this church. Because like I said, the lights don't pay itself. We don't pay, we have to pay somebody to clean it. Just imagine if one Sabbath you come here and it starts smelling. You're like, what's going on? So we, we pay somebody to clean the church. So just give a little extra. Don't forget, this is your church. This is your church family. So I'm asking you to continue to, you know, to listen and ask God to show you what you need to do. I have a tight envelope here. I need when you fill this out to please write legibly. A lot of times I don't know the names. Some of the names I know because I see it all the times. But half of the time if we have a visitor or the first time giver, I can't even read it. I'm struggling to read it. And if you don't give a phone number, I can't call you and say, hey, how do you spell your name? I know a lot of, some of you all know that I've called you all and say, hey, I don't know what to, how to spell it. Can you spell your name for me? So I just want to thank you. And I just pray that God will bless you through the year so you can continue to bless this church. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for the blessing that you've given us so far. Lord, this morning we have just been anointed and we pray, God, that you anoint us so we can continue to do your work. And you give us the talent that we need, Father God. As, we, as the buckets come along, Father, just touch each and, us, each and every one of us hearts to let us know what we need to give. 
We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As a deacon come to collect the tithe and offering. Come on, while you're giving your physical gift, we're going to give praise. Is that all right?
Happy Sabbath, everybody. All right. We have three baptisms today. Three. Three young ladies. They're off and running at an early start. So first, we have Miss Brenda Mitchell. She's getting baptized. Congratulations. Brenda, because of your love for Jesus Christ and your desire to grow into one of God that God has created you to be, it is with joy today that I do rebaptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Shauna Mitchell. Now, if, if you didn't recognize these young ladies are twins, they're being baptized on the same day. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Sister Shauna, for your love for God, which is very evident in your life. It is with joy that I do baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Yes. And you know I love the children. I love the children. Do we have any more? It's not too late. All right, we have one more. Last but not least, and I do not want to mispronounce her name. Her name is Miss Evanique. There it is, Evanique Pierre. She's off to an early start as well. Amen. This baby, please, you can stand for this woman. We are so grateful for you, Ebony. Uh, she came smiling, running last Sabbath. I'll never forget. And she said, could I be baptized today? I said, well, church is over. And um, all week long, she was just looking forward to it, just excited. Amen, amen. And I'm telling you, for somebody who was here last week, it was just that communion that did it. Now, if I cannot have it this way, then I just want to. I just want the benefits of being baptized in the family of God. So, Evanick, because of your love for God, young lady, it is with joy that I do baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Congratulations, ladies. God bless you. Say nothing but. Is anyone out there want to say, listen, Pastor, I'm not baptized, but I I pray that in my future this happens. Let me just see your hand. You, you're not making the decision today, but you're saying, just I see your hand, son. I see you. Anybody else? Just want to pray as we, every last Sabbath of each month, we're going to be having baptism. So the whole month, you've got time to pray, to grow, to ask God what it is that God wants to do through your life. And every last Sabbath, I've already instructed up my deacons to make sure there's water in the pool so that somebody wants to say, Jesus, let's go, they may say, let's go. Can I get an amen? amen? So I'm pleading and asking the church. I see, I see a hand. I'm asking the church to pray. Whenever you pray in the morning, pray in the evening. Amen. Pray, amen. Pray. All right. All right. We're praying for numerical growth, which means our church to grow in numbers. 
We are praying for spiritual growth, which means not only are we going to grow in numbers, but we are going to go deep in the things of God. So whenever you pray for yourself, please remember your church. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this moment. Grateful that it's still working. You are still saving and marking and maturing and still making disciples. So thank you, Lord, for this moment. And thank you for the hands that were lifted up. And we pray that, Lord, the journey may continue and lead them to this place of baptism. Bless your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Oh, I said amen, church. Amen. We know heaven is rejoicing, amen. How many want to join heaven in rejoicing? If you want to rejoice with heaven, stand to your feet. Come on, it's 2023. You should have plenty of energy. Come on, stand on up. We're going to give God some praise. Is that all right? Give Him praise for your fresh anointing. Give Him praise for the three souls that just got saved. Amen. Give Him praise that you saw a new year. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just going to give God a little praise. Is that all right? That's what we came to do. We came to magnify the Lord and praise His holy name. Amen. Put your hands together. Come on, we need your energy. We need you singing with us. Amen. Come on, everybody. I came to magnify. I came. I came to magnify the Lord. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Lift Jesus high.
somebody. I told you, you start 23, 23 off right. Praise in the name of Jesus, all right? Hallelujah. We came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The song says, let praises rise from the inside from the inside he put a praise in each of us hallelujah. we just want to give it back to him is that all right yeah. is that all right hallelujah we're just worshiping our god he's been so good Let praise is right. one more time. If that's your prayer for 23, just wave your hand. Let praises Fill my life 
until all they see is you. Hide me in your glory, God. Come on, let's sing that with us. Sing that with us. Feel my life? Feel my life till all they see. More of him and less of us. Yeah, one more time. Feel my life. Feel my heart. Feel all they see is you. Feel my life. Till all they see is you, Lord. Glorify your name. Feel my life. Father, thank you so much for this moment. Master, we're so grateful that we are in the land of the living. And we pray that, Lord, you may say a word. If all we have done can be done without hearing from you, then all of it is a performance and entertainment. But, God, it is you and your speaking into our lives that will transform and change us. So do it one more time. On a granger level now is God we are praying and desiring a godly impact in Jesus name we do pray amen come with me to the book of Isaiah today I'm gonna be preaching as we launch out our theme for 2023 godly impact for there are many people in this world who are impactful there are many people that you know I know who have done some things that were great but not every great thing is a godly thing. And not every good thing is a godly thing. So we're trying to say, God, we want to go beyond the excitement of the good. We want to go beyond the mesmerization of the great. And we want to have a godly legacy that will impact other people's lives. That when it's all said and done, when our names are remembered, when our names are mentioned, God will still receive maximum glory. So this book of Isaiah, some theologians have called it the miniature Bible. It is a book with 66 chapters in it. And you can easily divide the book of Isaiah into two. After those first 39 chapters, as much as the Old Testament is 39 books, it focuses on the old promises of God. And when you jump into 40 all the way to the end, you discover that this book of Isaiah is loaded with the pointers of what it is that God was going to do under the new covenant. 
But today I want to bring your attention to chapter 43. There's an echo somewhere. Fix it for me, please. Isaiah 43 and verse 18 and 19 reads this way. 18 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That alone is a good word. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Somebody's in here today who needs to hear this word. That listen, you have a past. All of us have a past. But if we keep on hanging around and remaining addicted to our past, we are going to miss out on what God is about to do. The thing about the past is that it once was wonderful, I tell everybody. Anything that is called tradition or anything that is called a ritual is something that was good once upon a time and whose time has expired. That's the thing with your past. Whatever happened in the past, it has expired and you cannot do nothing about it. So God understands that, that there's this, uh, this, this, this eternal hook that we all have when it comes to our past. It's easy for you to talk about your past in some glamorous ways. One thing I've discovered in my life is that, listen, um, the past has some trophies. Anybody with some trophies in the past? All right, anybody with some trophies? Somebody who had some wins in the past. The difference between uh, a trophy and a stone of remembrance is this, that. Both have something to do with the past. The stone of remembrance, that's what God keeps on using in the Bible. He tells the children of Israel, pick up 12 stones, build an altar, and when they come to you and ask you, are you with me? Let them, let them know that the Lord did this thing. But these stones of remembrance from your past, they are in to remind the coming generations of what God did in the past so that they can believe God more for the future. So the difference between stones of, deliver uh, of remembrance and trophies are this. Stones of remembrance, whilst they are from the past, they are energy for the future. But every trophy is a reminder of past victory. And it ends there. If you don't fight again, you won't get another trophy. If you quit right now, you'll be a one-time wonder. So I want to challenge somebody. God says, do, forget those things that are in the water, everybody, in the past. And then verse 19, that's where I'm going to anchor for a few minutes as we interact together here. It reads this way. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The NIV says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the west land. Um, the, the, the KJV and KJV says, shall you not know it? So in other words, you've got to know that thing. The NIV says, well, uh, do you not perceive it? You must perceive that thing. And another version says, do you not see it? And as I was interacting with this version, something really jumped out of my spirit. God is saying, I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. And there's a wonderful uh, a coma or exclamation mark that's there. Elder Kelly that says, listen, God is saying, I'm doing this. At some point, you need to start believing that I am doing this. I want to challenge you this afternoon as you journey into this year for you to, to really say, God, give me a perception and a knowledge and a sight that sees the new thing you're doing in my life. So this is where our faith gets fed, our hope gets enlarged, our trust gets deepened when we expect that it won't always be like this. Whatever this is, we need to understand there's a God who specializes in doing new things. And God says, I'm so much God that even I like that. It says, I'm doing a new thing, and as if, uh, by the way, I will even make a road in the wilderness. 
In other words, that's extra stuff. I will even make rivers in the water, everybody, in the, in the desert. Where you do not expect water, I'm going to make a river that just flows through this desert. Where you do not see any clarity and direction, God says, I'm going to put up a highway of righteousness in the midst of a wilderness. I want to challenge you today as you look into the future. Because God is doing a new thing. What is it that I must do? God says, do you not perceive it? God says, do you not see it? In other words, if we are to have godly impact this year with God leading us and guiding us and new things popping around us, here it is, we must expect the unlikely. In 2023, you must doubt the obvious and expect the unlikely. That's what God is saying. He says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing the unlikely thing. Well, God talked to me. He says, well, if you pull out my resume, you'll discover that it was unlikely that Cain could be forgiven, but I did that. God would say, well, a drunk like Noah had to be saved in the boat. It was unlikely because he was as bad as the people he preached to, but I did that. God will let you know I walked into the land of the heathens and found a man called Abraham. It was unlikely for him to worship me, but I did that. God will let you know, listen, Pharaoh was the master powerful man who could literally, he was the superpower of the day. But I walked in and used frogs and darkness and lies and mice to just but decimate his kingdom. I did that. It was unlikely, but God did the impossible through the unlikely. If God is going to take you to a place you've never been in this year, may you learn to expect the unlikely. The unlikely that you with yourself God is thinking about you. The unlikely that me with all my procrastination self God can do something beyond what I've ever done. You need to get to a place we walk by faith and not by sight which means we are a people who believe they are likely. Unlikely that a virgin could be pregnant. Unlikely that God could be contained in a human uterus. Unlikely that God could survive with the donkeys and the cows in the manger. Unlikely that God anybody could walk on the water. It was unlikely but Peter walked on the water. It was unlikely that somebody could simply touch someone's clothes and be healed by the woman of the issue of blood did the unlikely. For godly impact for godly impact to happen and take place in our lives. May this be the year that we are going to expect the unlikely. I could go on with the whole list of the unlikely. I mean, you are 99 years old. Your, your chick is only 90 years old. She is out of business. All of you are just out of business. You know what I'm saying? And then God simply says, it's unlikely, but you're getting pregnant. See, so if you are going to go ahead with your life, always expecting likely things. I mean, Ruth, oh, you're going to get boys, but that's unlikely. Because you need to understand I'm a widow. I, I had a man, and the man died. And how can I find anything better than what died? Woo! It had to die so that the unlikely could walk into your life. But the question is, you better expect it in order for you to embrace it when you meet with it. Oh, God, have mercy. God says, I'm doing a new thing. Not only brothers and sisters, he says, listen, not only am I doing this, it's unlikely for you to find a road in the desert. It's unlikely for you to find a river in, 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 in a desert, but here it is. So it, not only should I expect the unlikely for godly impact, but I must think the unthinkable. <sighs> I, I, I must think the unthinkable. Once upon a time, YouTube was unthinkable. Two boys in a garage. Paul thought the unthinkable. And today we're preaching the gospel on the YouTube because two boys got bored. You must think the unthinkable. 
There were two boys, uh, three, four friends who used to go to the clubs whilst they were at Harvard and go in and meet girls and sleep with them. And in order for them to kind of count through faces of who they had slept with, they came up with Facebook. Oh yeah, they are literally accidental billionaires. There's a book called that. Young people read that thing. If you're just going to sit around and just expect the thinkable to become the reality, you're going to miss it. Why do you need faith if what you want to do is the obvious stuff of life? You must get to a place where it is unthinkable, but I believe it. And think about that, a thief on the cross. <laughs> Uh, hung, hanging next to Jesus. <laughs> he would see in himself a child of God. It was unthinkable, but he listened to his prayer request. He says, Lord, and God says, hmm, and he says, remember me. It was unthinkable, but he had to make the request. Well, I'll come your way, come your lane. Here it is. Even demons. Jesus went to, he says, what's your name? They said, we are many. We are legion. And God says, get out. And the demons did the unthinkable. They made their request known unto God. And they said, well, come out of him, but don't drive us out of this region. And God answered the prayer of demons. So th th that's another year for the obvious. If somebody's going to be a millionaire, why not you? You just don't know how, which means you have 100% options to become in. Sometimes the greatest blessing in life is not knowing how. Yeah. Think the unthinkable. I remember working with the NASA uh, 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 in, in Huntsville, and I went into the office of the guy who was the CEO, and when I got in to meet with him, something that blew my mind on his desk. I was, I was really looking forward. I wanted to see what is it that he reads, who, what makes him him. And people's offices have a way of telling the story sometimes. And so when I got in on his desk, Kelly, it was all clear, but there was a rock in a corner and engraved on the rock was the word think. May this be the year that you start thinking. Prayer is not a substitute of thinking. Because there are many people who don't pray like you, don't come to church like you, who are doing impactful things without prayer. They are doing all they can through thinking. Don't substitute, develop your mind in 2023. So that you can think some things you must think. I remember my mama, whenever I'd messed up, she would come in and say, well, what were you thinking? Now that I'm grown, I've discovered there are some situations you don't have to pray out of. You just need to be thinking somebody. If you think that thing, you won't get into that thing. So for many of us, we're not even ready to think the unthinkable because we, we need to start with thinking. Before you go and buy another TV, think. Ain't that right? Mother Jesse Anthony is in here. Just wave, Mother. Just wave a little bit. Just wave. She wanted to come last week. She's going to make it. She made it today. You just got to think. So people who think are not envious of other people. Because whatever they got is because they think. Right. Do Dr. Ba Banwell, he is a neurosurgeon. You can't be a neurosurgeon by simply praying. You need to think. Yeah. Yeah. Many of us who have excused the things of God, if the, the most underutilized weapon in humanity is up here, it's our minds. Yeah. We got to think the unthinkable. Lord, where can we go? 
Oh, I was walking around this week and I went to a small sanctuary, uh, which is our fellowship hall now. And I started walking in there. And I, I, I'm told that this church has got some thinkers. Because whilst they were in this small little church, they started thinking. They started thinking of a church that was larger than the small space. And the truth of the matter is, we are all recipients and beneficiaries of other people's thinking. What will happen when you start thinking? Who benefits when you start thinking? So in order for us to have godly impact, we need whew, God and mercy. Can I say this? You remember when Jesus wanted to do this amazing miracle, uh, 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 he wanted to feed the 5,000 with food, and, and he asked the question. Didn't he ask the question? He said, where, where are we going to get food? And then, and then somebody came in quickly. Uh, Philip came in as an accountant. And Philip says, I've calculated, I've counted the heads, uh, even if we were to work for one year. I mean, he was just moving with the thinkable. Come on, talk to me. Oh, here it is. Jesus in a church of the thinkable and the unthinkable thinkers. Because whilst Philip was, was mesmerizing Jesus with the impossibility, don't use your mind to limit you. Because Andrew came in. And Andrew didn't tell Jesus what to do. He simply said, there's a little boy here, by the way, with some little fish and some little, uh, <clears throat> that's it. That's all I said. And Philip says, it don't matter what you're talking about. Uh, it's an accountant. It won't work. But Andrew simply thought the unthinkable. And you need to understand, brothers and sisters, because, oh, God, it is. Because you need to understand, uh, uh, um, when you read your Bible world, you'll discover that by the time Jesus fed the 5,000, he had already before, a year before, he had fed 4,000. So, so, Andrew remembered what he had done. Oh, God, and that's it. If you look over your shoulder, God was good to you in 2022. If he is the same God who blessed you in 2022, don't you even think that God can do the unthinkable in 2023? I don't want to stand here and be the same way I am. I want God to take me where I've never been. Am I scared? Sometimes I am. Do I know where I'm going? I have no idea, but I'm just saying, God, we better go. If anyone is going to go, why not me? Only should they believe the unlikely. Uh, those who have been interacting with me in the leadership of this church know that I've frustrated a lot of them because no is my favorite word. And some of you will say, well, maybe because he's African. No, that's not it. Because I've discovered that the human heart always wants the minimum. God says, I'm doing a new thing. And God says, not only am I doing it, you must know it, you must perceive it, you must say it. Man of us, oh, write this thing down, young people, where are you at? Man of us are a small part of what we could be. If Ruth was here, she would let you know, Pastor, I was just glad to pick up some wheat. I didn't know that God was going to give me the field, the wheat, the workers, and the husband who owned it all. I was going to move from the recipient of someone's grace to being the one who literally hires and fires everybody in the field. Unthinkable. That's why, that's why I don't listen to everybody. I don't. I really don't. I'm a very stubborn pastor. I'll let you know that. Because I don't just take whatever everybody says. Because some people are in the average, in the average of life. That, that's what Peter did, uh, Gibson. Peter, it was Peter who says, since it is you, tell me. That. <laughs> that's unthinkable. He said, you walking on the water alone. I want to walk with you over there. If it's you, get me to walk on the water. Now watch this. He says, since it's you, beat me to come. Listen to Jesus. Jesus never said, Peter, come. Jesus gave one word, come, which means all of them could have simply jumped out and everybody was going to walk on the water. Don't be a hater in 2023. If you like a house, think the impossible. 
Stop driving around the hood where you don't want to leave. Go where you can't afford. <laughs> Tell your kids, get in the car. We're going where the rich people live. <laughs> Do you see that? Ooh, I like that. If you go to school, you can buy that. <laughs> Take them to the hood. Oh, daddy, I'm scared. You don't like school. You're going to leave over there. <laughs> Here you go. You, you, you just got to find a way of inspiring yourself to think the unthinkable. You came into the Houston area where there are many mega churches here. And I had to drive around Willow Avenue just to go see my boy, Marcus Cosby. I want to come in to preach, but we need to be ready for him to come. And I had to go over there just to watch around. I'm thinking, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I don't know when I'm going to get there, but I'm going to preach like that. And listen to me. I, because here it is, there is more to you than what you have used. This idea of not coming for prayer meeting. <laughs> Where are you going? You are at home. We know you're at home. You are shopping somewhere. There's nothing deep you're doing. <laughs> and stop lying. I'm watching it on TV. You cannot watch TV for an hour. I, I can't even watch myself. <laughs> Sabbath school. You are the same person who is keeping your company alive because you were there on time. And we give you a free book. And you can download a free book. Everything free. We have these elections that we've done. You've seen the list. We just put the head of the department and we left the rest of the department open. Why? Because we want people who want to work for them to function under those departments. What is God telling you to do? You, you, what are you willing to do this year? What, what is the unthinkable that you're willing to say, man, I got to do this kind of thing. I want to be part of where God is going. They used to sing the song. I like it. Lord, whatever you are doing in this season, please don't do it without me. And the last thing that I get out of your way. Oh my God. Oh. Expect the unlikely doc. It's unlikely. When I go to the airport, I get in there. I know I am. I've got a ticket that makes me sit next to the bathroom right at the end. But when I go, I, I'm expecting the unlikely. I don't get on a plane looking like I'm going jogging. I put on my suit. Because I've discovered somebody's not going to make it on the first class. And when they look into all this and they find somebody looking like he just woke up. Somebody looking like the pants are down. They look at me and they say, here he is somebody. He's going somewhere. Sir, will you please come over here? <laughs> That's unlikely. But I'm going to sit in there like I paid for that thing. You, you got to look like your future. You got to look like your future, man. You, you can't look like your past. You, I know you from, from wherever you are, but you, but you left wherever you are, and you came to wherever you are now. And, oh, God, here it is. I shouldn't look at you and see your past. I should look at you and see your future. Fond run, you got to get ready this year. Are we going to do the unthinkable? We are in a city where we have got a an NFL team, we've got an NBA team, we've got the champions of the MLB and none of them attend our church. Why not us? And every one of these teams have got a chaplain. Why not me? So some of you with small thinking, run away from me because listen, you're going to conclude some negative stuff. Keep them to yourself. We're in a city of four million people. Come on down to me. The mayor of Houston is a friend of Andy Jesse. Bring him to church next time. Introduce me. Just hook me up. In your walk with God, seriously, if your prayer life is to become vibrant, there has to be some impossible stuff. Some unthinkable stuff. That's why we need prayer. And then the last thing. Uh, you ready for this one? God says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm, I'm letting rivers flow. I'm putting highways in this wilderness wasteland. Here it is. In 2023, land to hope 
in the unbearable. Desert unbearable. Westland unbearable. And God says, I'm doing something in that unbearable situation. So it don't matter what situation you find yourself in. May God take us to a place where we got hope in the unbearable. I like my girl, uh, 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 Cosby, the one who sings or wrote most of our hymns that we sing uh, in the church. Fanny, Fanny uh, Crosby, she was born blind. And while she was blind, once upon a time, the parents almost found somebody who pretended and preferred and who could have healed her from her blindness. But she was at a place with God that she preferred to remain blind for she said, I see and hear from him better blind than when I got eyes. So whenever you sing next time the hymn, uh, Jesus kept me near the cross, the cross, that's Fanny. Hope in the unbearable. When you sing, there is a fountain filled with blood. You need to understand so many of our hymns that we sing. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. That's funny. She chose not to see and chose to remain blind because there was more hope in the unbearable than what she could have had with the eyesight. Child of God, this is the life of the believer. The believer is going to have some deserts. They are coming. Because some miracles of God only take place in deserts. Water from the rock in desert. Manna every morning in the desert. Oh, snakes that bite and a snake that heals in the desert. Oh, here it is. Revelation of who is ready for the promised land in the desert. Every Christian is going to suffer. But by the time it comes, there is hope in the unbearable. Why? Because God says, I am doing a new thing. I told my wife, I, I'm so much believing in this thing. I had to buy this, do this sermon. I had to go uh, and buy, I had to buy a new Bible. I can't preach about new stuff with the old stuff. Some of you just need to go and buy new sheets, new pillows. And I don't know, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. You cannot go bigger whilst you live small. God says, how about to do this thing? So here's the question. Our theme every Sabbath is, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 we need, what is it? Uh, uh, gains for godly what? For godly impact. On Tuesday, it's losses, necessary losses for godly impact. That's Tuesday night. Uh, on Sabbath, we're doing what? Necessary gains for what? For godly impact. So what are the necessary gains in the text? Number one, in order for us to have godly impact, you ready for this? We must have an outrageous perception. Outrageous perception toward life. And the second thing you discover is this outrageous anticipation. Some of you say, Pastor, where is it in the text? Look at the first word of the text. What does it say, everybody? Behold, you got to be anticipating something. The moment you read that, it means the rest of the verse, you must get into outrageous anticipation. Why? Because God has to do something. That's something you need to gain in 2023. Outrageous anticipation. And next to outrageous anticipation, you better have outrageous expectation. I need to look at you and know where you're going. My grandmother used to say, boy, walk like you're going. If we are going to have godly impact, we need outrageous expectation. Excel needs 100 students. I'm talking to some folk and they say, well, we only have a few. What are we going to do? We're going to fire some teachers. We're going to, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are in a city of four million people. Four million. I'm talking of millies. And we're struggling to get five. And some of you grandmothers, listen to me right here. You are the one who needs to have an, an outrageous perception to get all your grandkids who are being raised by your daughter and son who is crazy, preparing them for this world and are preparing them for the world to come to bring them to excel. 
We don't need to go too far. Oh, pastor, well, the education is not that deep. Well, so you would rather have it. Listen, 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 listen. There ain't no perfection. Wherever your kid goes, the teacher might be gay. The teacher might be a weed smoker. The teacher may actually be a pedophile. You just don't know. So it is, you, you got to get to a place where you support what you stand for. We don't do these things because it's all roses and pink. No, we stand for this thing. Christian education is a pillar of our church. If your kid ain't coming to Excel, don't speak against Excel. Recruit for Excel. The money you could have been using your kid to go to Excel, get somebody else's kid who cannot afford and you pay for it. Why? I believe in this thing. I sit in my office and I wonder, and I see all of my wonderful people. All of you got kids. Oh, we ain't bring our kids over there because, you know, the school ain't right. And I'm thinking, I was brought over here to pastor you and build the school. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you want me to join you and get happy that the school is dying? No, I didn't come for that. I came to build it up. That's godly impact. Yes, sir. Against deserts, against wildernesses. Watch this. Rivers flowing. Highways coming in. Why? God is doing a new thing. And I want to be part of it. But y'all have got it here today. And as I feel you're going to now, you're shaking your heads. What is he? Where is he going now? Well, it's outrageous this year. We just got to do it. I've been in some churches. I know some people say, well, they say, well, we prayed for somebody who was in the wheelchair elder and they got up. And before we quickly say, well, that wasn't real. I'm thinking to myself, what are we trying to do as a church to get somebody out of the wheelchair? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I just need to see what you're doing for me to at least see what you're expecting. Yeah. When you're expecting, I've seen some women who are expecting. I, I went somewhere this weekend and I wanted to park near the door. Have you ever done that? I wanted to just get in and get something. And I saw this open parking space and I said, praise the Lord. Look at God. Won't you do it? He had already done it. And when I got there, I discovered it had this, this thing on it, expectant mothers. <laughs> then I say to myself, <laughs> 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 Even the world has space for expecting something, somebody. Yeah. And when people are expecting, you find that before the baby comes, there are baby stuff in the house. The baby ain't there. But the creep is there, the everything is getting ready, everything is getting right. What's going on? We're expecting, you know. As a child of God, what is it that you're expecting that is changing your life? For godly impact to take place, children of God, we got to go beyond. I want a group of people who come every Sabbath to pray for some, some, some Texans players to come. They go to someone's church. Why not us? If they go to Joel, I think I, you know, I think I preach a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. you know why not us? Yeah, you got to know some things about you. I mean, this is not a sermon that I just came up with in the parking lot. No, I thought about you with your deep self, that how can I even inspire you with your deep self? Why can't the mayor of Missouri goes to someone's church? Why not us? Because he was a student of uh, Dr. Carrington, you know. I'm telling you the truth. If Dr. Carrington was good enough to teach him, why can't he come over here? Because if he ain't going to church, we know anybody who's not going to church, we know where they're going to go when Jesus comes again. What would happen if 1% of your co-workers become members of this church? Outrageous. But God wants to do that. To my young people, those friends you go to school with, how many of them do you want to come to church this year? That kid that nobody likes. Tell them there's a place where everybody's liked. Godly impact. And God says, I'm doing it. <laughs> he didn't say, you're doing it. He says, I'm doing it. How many of us that our God is a doer? 
is a resume. It's full of some doing, isn't it? I mean, he is the one who just put stuff together. He just been doing, and he says, no, in your life, I'm doing the new. So if you're here today, and you want to say, listen, pastor, I want God to come into my life. I don't even want to limit your imagination by telling you what to stand up for, what to give yourself for, but you are listening. And you want to say, God, I need eyes and a mind that can perceive. A heart and mind that can anticipate. A heart and mind that can expect. Take me, God, to the unlikely. Take me, God, to the unthinkable. And God, when I feel like giving up in the unbearable, give me hope. I need hope in the unbearable. And I want you, God, to find your glory through my life. And you're here today. I'm going to ask you to please stand as we pray. And that's you're going to ask you to please stand as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before your mighty throne today. We are grateful that this word of God is full of life. It is the Rema word that you send here this afternoon to revive us, to restore us, to restart us, for others, God, to resurrect the hope in us. And we pray for whatever is being represented by each and every one of us today, that God, our prayers, our requests are being made known to you. You understand our hearts better than we do. And God, we're just praying that you may take us out of the regular. Take us out of the normal. And Master, we pray that this be the year that our faith starts working. We are praying that, Lord, our walking may never be based on our sight, but may forever be based on our faith. And we pray that, Master, you may do that which only you can do. And we pray that together as a congregation, you may grow us, take away the spirit of competition, Take away the spirit of criticism. For God, whatever you're going to do in our lives, we have no idea. But we want to be cheerleaders of each other. Give us noble thoughts about each other, especially when we are apart from each other. We pray that, Master, you may do, you may save this city because you have unleashed a church that's thirsting and hungering after godly impact. Begin in our lives, begin in our families, begin in our neighborhoods and on our jobs. And God, we pray, just do that which only you can do. Forgive us of our sins and restore your image in us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let's put our hands together as we listen to this song. I want, there's a song I want you to listen to whilst they're coming up. And please don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. We're not done yet. There's a gift that's at the end. You're going to miss it if you leave right now. And let's have it. This is our prayer for you in 2023. And please let's listen to this one. Let's put the volume on. And may your battles in the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. And may your whole life prove that God is good. See, may your struggles. That's our prayer for you this year. Whatever comes, whatever goes, may God get maximum glory through our lives. 
individually, collectively as a church. And whatever birthdays you have this year, may you prove that God is still good. Godly impact in 2023. That's the desire. This moment, I'm going to ask our ashes to please come quickly. I'm going to give you a just a little token that we're going to give to you. Each and every one of you, you do whatever you want to do. Put it in your car, put it on your wrist. You're going to remind each other this year that is Godly Impact 2023. So we're going to give you a wrist that's this for free. You don't have to pay for it. It's just a reminder that your church is on a Godly Impact this year. We want to do what we have never done before. Some of you may say, I don't need that on my hand. Put it on the visor of your car. Put it where you see it. And as you pray for yourself, please remember to pray for the church. There are so many people who need what this church has. There are so many people who need this church. They just don't know it. So this year we are believing God to do what we have never done before. And we can sing along. Please. going to be singing every Sabbath after sermon preaching. Whatever happens during the week, don't forget Godly Impact. And God, everything is opportunity in 2023. Everything is opportunity. Whether it's the mountain, whether it's the valley, whether it's the struggle, whether it's the good or it's the bad, may we find God in it. Because we know God is in it. Let's all stand for our benediction as we uh, dismiss yourself, Elder Lee. Can you come and dismiss the church here? Please help me out. We're going to have that benediction. Uh, we're going to have the senior, the senior guy help us out. Amen. Yeah, I know. I, I, I've been young and I'm still young. And I've learned that whenever the seniors, we have walked with him for a little while longer than you, around, you, you don't lose anything. You gain everything when they say a blessing. So we're going to have elder, Elder Lee, um, and I'm going to ask you just to ask God for one thing that you're gonna, you want to be part of in this church. One thing. There's one thing you want to say, God, please help me with this one thing. I want to show up. I want to be part of it as the men of God. Praise for it. You're the Lord of our vision, God. You've already given us the vision of heaven. Now we need to know the vision of making heaven come to earth so that we can translate 
into your kingdom. Dear Lord, we have many things that we represent. We give them to you. We've already been led to look at the bad things as God's opportunity. We've already been given the opportunity to know that we can walk out of here changed. We pray for that change to happen here and now and forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to ask, you may be seated. Our usher is going to ask us how. And I'm going to ask the three who were baptized to please stand with me at the door. And we are encouraging the church, if you please find it in your heart, just to come and shake the hands of these three young ladies and just say a word of encouragement to them as they uh, go forward. See you on Tuesday. See you on Sabbath. And don't forget your respective uh, meeting that you have with your cultural group, um, whether it's the Caribbean, Black Caribbean, Black American, or Black Continental African that we want to meet with. But for the sake of these three, we're going to ask you, please, if you don't mind, just a few minutes of you coming in to shake their hands and encourage. And our guests, please get your gift at our Welcome Center. Blessings on you. As we leave, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. 